Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jerry Galloway, lead pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. Uh, Psalm 90. Psalm 90 is where we're going today, and we're going to spend our time together. Psalm 90, verse number 12. Psalm 90 and verse number 12. If you have your Bible, turn there with us. If you have your electronic device, you can swipe, scroll, whatever your device has you to do. Um, I would recommend to you that we have the YouVersion app that is available. Uh, in the YouVersion app, just go to the events. You'll find us listed there, and you'll have the notes and all the passages for today there for you. Psalm 90 and verse 12 was where we're going. I want to share with you this morning for a few minutes on living the dash or dashing to live. I read of a man who stood up to speak at the funeral for a friend. He referred to the dates on his tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of his birth. And he spoke the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For the dash represented all the time that he had spent alive on earth. And now only those who love him know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters most is how we live and love, how we spend our dash. So think long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel. And be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a while. So when your eulogies being read with your life's actions to rehash. Would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? Friends, today as we've gathered in this place, the reality of life brings us to a hard, cold truth. All of us in this room have an expiration date. What might you do if you only had a short time to live? What if the clock were to start counting down even now as we speak? What things would be most important to you? What would be the things you'd want to make sure that you accomplished? What things would you choose not to be concerned about? And who are the people you would be most concerned with? What relationships would you mend? And most importantly, what would you do with your relationship with God? Psalm 90 and verse 12, this, is, uh, this 90th Psalm is actually the prayer of Moses, the man of God. Verse 12 says these words, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a a heart of wisdom. In 2015, Paula and I were in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And while we were there, we visited Independence Hall and many of the great uh, landmarks that have lots of history for our nation. Just down from Independence Hall is Christ Church. Within the brick walls uh, of Christ Church, is the place where Benjamin Franklin is buried. I was amazed as we stood beside his grave. 
I had grown up in America and I had heard all the history lessons of all the things that Benjamin Franklin had done. I was most intrigued that day as I stood there at the things about Benjamin Franklin that I had no idea of. Line after line. Thought after thought. Year after year and accomplishment after accomplishment was listed under his name. We went from Christ Church to other landmark places. And we read about men and women who had incredible impacts. We stood, I, in fact, as I was uh, in preparation for today, I was looking through some of the pictures from that trip, and there's a place where there's a, a large plaque on the ground, uh, and it's talked about this is the exact place that Abraham Lincoln stood outside Independence Hall. And you would see person after person that was listed in history, but one of the things that you would notice about all of them they all had two dates associated with their name. The date of their birth and the date of their death. But the truth is those dates really don't tell us much about their lives. For you see, our lives are not defined by the date of our birth and our death, but rather the dash that lies between the dates. There are many things that you and I cannot control in this life. You cannot control when you were born. You cannot control to whom you were born. You cannot control your death nor the date of your death. There's an incredible amount of our lives, friends, that we have absolutely no control over. But what we do get to decide, the one thing God has placed in your hands as your responsibility is how you spend the dash between the years. Are you living the dash or are you dashing to live? Who are you living the dash for? Are you living your life, your life for yourself? Are you living your life for your dreams, your visions, your goals, your passions? Or are you living yourself, your life for Christ and for others? Are you living your dash Fully knowing your purpose in life and giving the best you have to make the most of the opportunity you've been afforded? Or are you dashing to live, hurriedly spending precious time chasing after things that, friends, frankly, don't matter for much? Over the years, I have had the privilege of walking the journey of life with many people who were coming to the close and the end of their life on this earth. I can tell you with 100% certainty, all of them were concerned about the relationships that they had with people and their relationship with God. I have stood beside bedside after bedside after bedside, and I have talked to people about eternity. I have prayed with people to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord late in life, but thank God. Not too late. Late in life where they still have the opportunity to yield their heart and life to Jesus Christ. I've stood there and prayed with them and ministered to them during those times. I've had the opportunity to walk that time with them. And I can tell you that all of them were concerned about those things. Their relationship with God. I've had people who have served their whole life for Jesus Christ and come down to the end and they say, Pastor, I know everything's right, but I just want to pray together one more time. And I've had people who come down to the end of the wire and then for the first time yield their life to Jesus Christ. But not only their relationship with Jesus, but their concern was their relationship with others. Usually they try to amass family around. They'll call in family. They'll call in friends. It's a time as I've stood by bedsides and I've heard people say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the words that I spoke. I'm sorry for the years that I lived like this. I'm sorry for the times that I wasn't the person I needed to be. I've seen them ask, will you please forgive me? I need this to transpire in my life. 
I've seen relationships be mended in that last hour of life. But they never ask. Nobody ever says, hey, hey, you remember that award that I got at work for number one? Nobody ever wants that brought in. Nobody ever says, hey, hey, can you bring in my bank statement? I just want to last time before I take my last breath, I want to make sure that bank statement is balanced out and everything's right. All they're concerned about is loving God. And loving other people around them. See, in the Gospels, last week we walked through the Gospels a little bit together. And in the Gospels, you will see Jesus' earthly ministry. And you will find there that his earthly ministry is beginning to draw to a close. Doing so, he knew that his time was very short on this earth. And he knew that his time of ministry was coming to an end. And I believe that we can look into the life of Christ. And we can look in those final hours of Jesus' life on this earth. And we can find principles that will show you and I how to live the best we can with the dash that's been given to us. We can live the dash out. We can live it as God intended for us to do so. The first thing I would share with you this morning is this. Christ lived with purpose. Jesus Christ lived with purpose. He was passionate and he was purposeful about how he spent his time. Jesus was not consumed with the pleasures of this life, but rather he chose to live his life on purpose. John 6 and verse 38. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. I've not come down from heaven to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. You see, for you and I to live out our dash with purpose, friend, you must have the Son of God in your life. 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 and 12 says, And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life, but he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. God's pretty clear, isn't he? If we have Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, if if we received him and he has received us, friends, we have the life of God in us. But he says if we don't have the Son of God, if we don't have a relationship with Jesus, we don't have that spiritual life, but the Bible says rather we have something called spiritual death. John 10 and verse 10, Jesus said these words, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Listen to the way the Message Bible renders that. I came so that they could have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. Isn't that good? Jesus says, I've come not just so you can have life. Everybody on this earth has some life. If you have blood coursing through your veins and if you are a vertical today, There is life inside of you, and you have life. But, friend, you can be very alive but be very dead on the inside. Real life only comes through Jesus Christ. Real life on the inside only comes through the knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And, friend, the good news is this old body one day is going to go by the way of the grave. But the life that is in me will never cease. It's going to go to eternity, and I'm going to be with Jesus forever. Our life in Christ helps us prioritize the things that fill in the dash for our life and so that we can do so with purpose and passion. You know, if we're not careful, we'll spend a whole lot of our life and a whole lot of our time on things that are good while letting the best things go. This life goes by so fast. And before you know it, it's here and it's gone. And, you know, when we are young in life, we we hurry through life along. And as we get older, what do we try to do? We try to slow everything down. Yesterday, Paula and I 
uh, were out of town for a little while, and we were kind of on a little bit of time restraint, and so she went into one store, and I went into the other store, and I went into this store, and I thought, man, I need, I need a new ball cap, and so while she was in her store, I went over here to my store, and I looking through, and I thought, well, I like that one, and so I walked over, and they had this great big mirror over on the wall, and I walked over, and I thought, good Lord, who is that in the mirror? And I got up a little closer. I'm thinking, surely there's something wrong with the mirror. There was nothing wrong with the mirror. And I remember distinctly saying within myself, you don't look anything like you feel on the inside. <laughs> and so I put the hat on. Hat didn't change it at all. Well, I need another hat or another mirror. Something's got to change here. But you know what I found is life goes so quick. And though outwardly I'm changing, you know, inside I still feel 25, though I don't look 25 on the outside, nor always feel 25 on the outside. My life is changing. Life is going quick. Life is short, and we spend so much of our time hurrying through life. I am so moved by the passage In Psalm 63 and verse 4, I love this passage. It says, I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. I want the purpose of my life to be found in God. I want the determination that says with David, as long as I live, God, I'm going to praise your name. As long as there's breath in this body, Lord, I'm going to speak your praises. As long as there's strength in these whole arms, I'm going to keep lifting up my hands to praise and magnify your name. For when I think about the Lord and all that he's done for me, when I think about what he's brought me through, when I think about what he's kept me through, when I think about what he's done in me, how can I not? but praise him. The psalmist said, while I have life in me, I will praise and bless his holy name. Friends, don't don't wait until things are perfect to praise the Lord. Live your life as praise to him. Praise him now while you have life. Many spend much of their life waiting on their ship to come in. In hopes that when the ship comes in, surely things will be different than today. But for most, the ship never arrives. And they spend the entirety of the rest of their life going around saying, I wish I had. Friends, we're always waiting to live this incredible life while all along we are dashing to live instead of living our dash. We overestimate the power of tomorrow, and we get stuck in the someday syndrome, we all along then are spending the time we have today waiting on something better tomorrow. I want to challenge you today to begin to live your life with purpose and ask yourself, how well am I spending my dash Not only did Jesus Christ live with purpose, but friend, Jesus loved completely. I love this part. Jesus loved completely. When Jesus only had a short time left on this earth, the Bible tells us what he did with his life. John 13 and verse 1 records it. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. He loved them to the end. Friend, if you only knew that you had a short time to live, I'm sure that you'd want to do something with the time that you had left over. You'd want to love completely. You'd want to make sure that those around you that you love, you uh, enable them to experience the full extent of your love. You see, the, really the sum of our lives is found in loving others. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 39, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart 
and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. God says the priority you need to give your life to, friend, is love. Now, often we think, I need to give my life to uh, getting better leadership skills, or I need, to, uh, I need to get my life to the place where I can do this better, and I can do that better. I need, while I'm in the church, I need greater spiritual gifts. I need greater spiritual understanding. I need all these things that will better equip me to do what God has for me to do. But God says the first thing and the second most important thing is found in love. The thing we're to give our greatest energy to, friend, is love. At the end of your life, friend, it won't matter how much money was in the bank account. It won't matter how many awards you've won. It won't matter how many goals you accomplished. But what will matter is did you love the Lord with all your heart and did you love the people in your life that he placed there? If you knew the date when you would die, if they were to say to you the clock is ticking down and you have 24 hours to live, I really believe you would focus on the relationships in your life. Your relationship with God, growing close to him, your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and knowing him in a greater way. I believe you'd center your attention on God. I believe you'd center your attention upon family. I believe you'd center your attention upon your friends. I believe you'd center your time upon the people God had put in your life. Now, contrary to how we feel often when we are young in life, love is not a mushy thing. Love is a choice. Love is an action. Can I ask you today, what relationship do you need to mend today? When you get to the end of your life or they get to the end of your life, will the argument that's kept you separated for years, will it be worth it? Will the things that have kept you from speaking to other people, will it be worth it? I have stood at the bedside of people who were near the point of death and I have seen tears flood down the face of people that say, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I thought it was such a big deal and it's really not a big deal. Let me tell you what. Worse than that are the people that I've stood at a casket with and people have said, I wish I'd have told them I loved them. I wish I hadn't been so stubborn. I wish I hadn't been so defiant. I wish I'd have taken time to told them how much that they matter to me. Friend, we only have one life. So soon it will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. Listen, the greatest ministry you have is loving other people. The greatest thing you can involve yourself in is loving God and loving others like it. As you're living out your dash, I want to ask you today about your relationship with God and your relationship with others. Thirdly, this morning, not only did Jesus live with purpose, not only did Jesus love completely, but Jesus left with no regrets. Look at Luke chapter 9 and verse 51. Luke 9 and verse 51. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Christ was resolute in fulfilling the purpose for which he came to this earth. Now, there were many things that Jesus could have done Many things that Jesus could have occupied his time with knowing, you know, I've just got a few days uh, left. Um, I've got to get all these things done. I've got, I've got to get over here and I've got to get over there and I've got to do this and I've got to do that. When we get ready to leave on a trip to go someplace, I probably just about drive my wife plum crazy. For the last, I, I get me a list of things 
about a week out before I leave. And I'm checking off stuff. Got this done, got that done, got this done, got that done, got this done, got that done. Inevitably, something else will pop up. And I forgot that, add that to the list. And it's like I am caught in this whirlwind of I've got to get everything done and everything's got to be perfect or we can't leave town and go on vacation and be at rest because I'm so worked up. So we got to get this done. And so I'm making all these lists and I'm making all these plans and I'm doing all these things to try to get everything accomplished. And you know what the truth is? If we came back home, and something had been left out, it wouldn't have mattered at all. If that thing hadn't got done, it wouldn't have mattered. We'd have went on vacation and had a high old time, and that thing would have still been at the house when we got there. Listen, we can spend our lives and our energy trying to accomplish things that really don't amount to much. We find that Jesus left this life with no regrets. If you only had a short time to live, you wouldn't want to waste your time or energy on things that really don't matter. But you would want to give your last few days to the things that count the most. You'd spend your time preparing yourself for eternity. You'd spend your time preparing others for eternity. So now's the time to answer the question, friend, how are you living the dash? We all understand regrets. We've all experienced regrets. I wish, man. You ever had those days where you said something and as soon as it came out, you thought, oh, I wish I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Or you post something. That's always so wonderful. You post on Facebook. <laughs> and before you can get it deleted, somebody responds. Or you say you spout off and say something at work and you think everything's good until the boss comes through the door. <laughs> or at home with your family in a moment of frustration, you say things that you then wish, wow, I could still, oh, I'd love to take that back. Regrets. We all understand the truth is, friend, we can't do anything about yesterday. We can't do anything about the days that are going by. But we have today. The good news is we have today. I can't make that mark for the past. All I can do is rely on Jesus Christ to have forgiven me and cleanse me from all that shame and all my regrets. But from this day forward, friend, you and I can choose to live the time we have left with no regrets. You were created, friend, an eternal being. The Bible says that God has planted eternity in the heart of every man. There are many people that will tell you how to live your life. Jesus, when he came down to it, I'm sure when, when you look at the ministry of Jesus and you see all the people he touched, have you ever found in your life somebody else has a better idea what you ought to be doing with your time than you? I can't imagine there wasn't somebody in Jesus' time that thought, well, Jesus, you know what? You, you're, you're getting ready to leave here in a couple hours. Shouldn't you go back down to the pool of Bethesda and see if there's another invalid laying there? Shouldn't you walk down some of the streets of the town and see if there's some sick people that you could heal and make better? Shouldn't you go do this? Shouldn't you go visit somebody who's ill in their house and go spend time with them? Shouldn't you? Everybody would have had a better idea of what Jesus should have done with these last hours. But the Bible says Jesus, knowing his time was short, resolutely set out with purpose for Jerusalem as to what was ahead of him. Friends, we strive one day to stand as believers, to stand before God and hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. So I ask you in light of that, who are you living the dash for? Are you living it for yourself? Listen, if you spend your life just chasing after your own dreams and your own visions, friend, you're going to find life to be very empty indeed. But if you'll live your life for Jesus Christ, first of all, and the people around you, second of all, you'll find that you can go out of this life no matter when it comes with no regrets. Listen to the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 4 and 7. He said, coming to the end of his life, I have fought the good fight. 
I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. No regrets. I've given it my all. I've given it all I have. Friend, when the time comes for you to leave this life with no regrets, knowing that you've been doing what you needed to do, knowing that you've done what you needed to do, listen, you can leave this life prepared and ready for the next life with no regrets. Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Can I ask you this morning, how well are you living the dash? You see, in my life, the date of my birth is really important to one person. It's not my wife. It's not my son. It's not me unless I'm celebrating my birthday. The only person that my birth is really important to was my mama. She was there. She was the one that brought me into this life. My mom brought me into this life and she started me on a journey. But you see, my life is not dependent, nor is it determined by November the 29th, 1967. My life is determined by how Jerry chooses to live out the dash. You see, none of y'all were there the day I was born. In fact, it was so long ago, my daddy didn't even get to be in there when I was born. It was just me, my mom, the doctor, the nurses, and the Lord. That was it. But let me tell you something this morning. My life will not be determined by what happened in that room at Marion General Hospital. My life will be determined by the choices that I made yesterday and the choices that I make today. My life will be determined. My dash will be defined by what I choose to do with my life. And so I want to ask you today, friend, how are you living the dash? So sad is the times often when I sit down to meet with the family in preparation for a funeral service. There are some people I sit down with, and I'm telling you, it's, almost, it's kind of like they walk into the room with stacks of material to give me. And it's kind of like taking a, a person's whole life and trying to sum it up in about 15 or 20 minutes. It's a very daunting task. But let me tell you, harder than that is the family that comes in and sits down with me. And I say, tell me something about their life. And they can't come up with anything to tell me. They don't have any words. They don't have any thoughts. I'll say, was there anything really special to them? Well, no, no, not really. I'll say, was there a passage in their life that really kind of stood out? Maybe a book of the Bible that was really important to them. Well, no. I'd say, do you have any special memories with them? Some memories maybe that we could share during the service. Well, no, no, I really, no, I don't, I don't have anything. Wow. I want to ask you, how are you living the dash? Because listen, friend, when your life comes to the end, all that's going to matter is not the date of your birth or the date of your death, but it's going to matter how you lived out the dash. So how are you living? How are you living your life? What are you giving your life to? It's been said, in this life, as we live out our dash and we prepare for eternity, that you're never really ready to live until you're ready to leave. I want to ask you today, are you ready to leave? Do you know? Do you know that everything's okay if you were to die today? Do you know, friend, that you'd go to heaven? Do you know that your relationship with Jesus Christ is all right? Are you ready to leave this life in preparation for eternity because you know something I found 2016 I couldn't believe how many people that I would see the obituary in a paper or on Facebook how many people my age and younger were going to eternity you say I got years ahead friend you and I neither one are promised anything beyond right now in this moment that we have would you bow your heads this morning Father, I look to you this morning in these moments that we have together. And Father, I ask you today that, Father, you would speak to our hearts. And Father, 
Uh, I pray, Lord, that you'll do so in a way that is beyond uh, any other influence in our life. God, not the influence of, of those around us, not the influence of uh, the preacher. God, we pray that you'll speak to us today. Lord, this is the only life we have to live. This is it. This is the only time that I have. If things are going to change, this is the only moment that I have to make change. This is my life. Father, I ask you today to speak to our hearts in this place. Pray that, Father, you'll speak to each person. Pray you'll speak to each circumstance and each situation. I pray, Father, you make yourself very real to us in this room today. Talk to us, Father, about the things that are most important, I ask. Father, I trust you for it. I believe you for it. In the name of Jesus. Friends, if you'll just keep your heads bowed all across the house and just for the next few minutes, if you'll just uh, stay with me as we close. Friend, today, I don't know what the condition of your relationship with Jesus Christ is. But if you're here in this room and you'd say, Pastor, my relationship with Jesus isn't what, uh, isn't what it's been before. My relationship with Jesus isn't what it needs to be. I'm not saying, friend, you're walking us in. You're just saying my relationship with Jesus isn't as good as it, as it used to be. Maybe say a time, there's been a time in my life I've known Jesus in a greater way, walked with him in a greater way than I do today. Friend, this is the dash. This, this is it. This is it. Maybe you hear you say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. And you say, I'm not ready for eternity. And you say, Pastor, if I were to die today, I don't know that I'd be ready for heaven. Friend, either one of those situations, you say, my relationship with Jesus just isn't what it should be. Or maybe you don't even have a relationship with Jesus, but you say, today I would like to have one with him. Friend, with heads bowed all across the room, would you just lift up your hand between me and you and God and say, Pastor, remember me in prayer this morning. Yes. Yes. You can put your hand down, friend, after you've raised it. Others that will join these and will say, my relationship with Jesus just isn't quite what it should be. Things are not right. Things are not right between me and God. Yes. 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 How many others? You'd say, just please remember me in prayer, friend. I'm not, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to do anything. Yes. How many others while I wait? This is the most important time of our service today. Yes. Yes, thank you. You can put those hands down after you've raised them. Thank you. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray. With your head's still bowed. I'm going to pray a prayer. But friend, only you can make things right between you and Jesus. I can't do that for you. So I'm going to pray for us. But while I'm praying, would you just talk to him in your own way? Friend, he remembers what your voice sounds like. He knows you like nobody else knows you. And he loves you. He's not against you. He's for you. Today, as I pray this prayer, right where you're at, Friend, maybe you just need to say, Jesus, would you just forgive me of all my sin? Would you just come into my life and be my Savior? Maybe your prayer is going to be, Lord, I feel a little distant from you. Lord, I want to be close to you. I want to be closer than I've ever been before. Friend, no matter what your prayer, just talk to him. As a heavenly father, he's listening for your voice. So you pray that as I pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for each person in this room. Father, you know every person by name. 
You know everything about them. Father, you love them. And you're the one that keeps them. Father, I ask you today, Lord, as you've been drawing them, I pray for those who need, Lord, in need of forgiveness. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name they'd find unbelievable forgiveness, unbelievable cleansing, unbelievable release from past. Make yourself very real to them. And Lord, I pray for others. I just pray you'll come up really close to them today. Come up really close and let them know that you're still there, that you've not left and you've not departed away from them, but you're right there beside them. Lord, would you just minister their heart in a special way? And I pray in Jesus' name, God, that you'll give them exactly today what they need. I know, God, you're more than enough to do whatever they need today. So, Father, as you're listening for their prayer, I pray you'll respond, and I pray you'll do something really special in their heart, and you do something really special in their life, I pray. And, Father, for all of us together, Father, would you help us to make the most of our days? Teach us as Moses challenge us, teach us to number our days and make the most of the opportunities that we have for life is quickly fading help us to make the most of today and every day that you give us Lord, help us to set out to love you with all of our heart soul, our mind and our strength and God, help us to love those around us help us to love them the way you love us. Help us, God, to make you and those around us the greatest priorities of our lives. Use us, I pray, all for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Would you stand with me this morning? I believe with all of my heart that there's power in our spoken words. And so you and I, um, we have a little bit more left on the dash, don't we? Some of us have more than others, but we still have the dash. What I'd like to do today, I'd like to speak a word of blessing over your life in conjunction with your dash. Listen, friends, I'm nobody special, but I believe in the power of spoken word. I believe God hears when we speak. And I believe these are not just any words, but they're God's plan for your life. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare over you that your days ahead are going to be greater than your days behind. I declare over you that you're not going to be bound by your past, but you're going to be unleashed for your future. I declare over you that there are dreams you've yet to dream, works you've yet to accomplish that you will accomplish, things you will fulfill for the cause of the purpose of God's kingdom. I declare over you today that you are blessed coming in and you are blessed as you go out. You are blessed in whatever you put your hand to that God's name will be glorified through your life. I declare over you, your dash will not be wasted, but your dash will be mightily used of God. For it is our God that does exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or imagine. I declare over you, your days will not be lost, but your future found. I declare over you that you will be the head and not the tail. I declare over you that you will be sons and daughters of the Most High God and that His purpose and destiny will be fulfilled for you. I declare over you today 
the plans that the Lord has for you. Plans to bless you and prosper you. Plans to give you a hope and a future in the name of Jesus Christ, his son. May the Lord our God bless you. May the Lord our God keep you. And may the Lord our God always smile upon your life. May he keep you, bless you in all things. In Jesus' name. I declare it. Amen and amen. I love each of you. It's so good to see you today in the house of the Lord. May you be blessed today and may the joy of the Lord always be your strength. God bless you. Have a great day.